Hi guys, my name is Heather Scarlett Rose and I am a local musician and music teacher in the San Francisco Bay Area. Today we're going to talk about the mechanics of the voice. How does the voice actually work? Well, to start, we need to recognize that the voice is really just a sound wave that starts at the vocal cords and comes up through the throat and out the mouth. So like any other sound wave, the voice needs something to generate a vibration, right? And that vibration is our vocal cords. Also, like any other sound wave, that vibration has to be caused by some kind of a force. And in the case of the voice, that force is our air. We inhale, fill up the lungs, and the air travels up the trachea and vibrates the vocal cords, and the sound comes out the mouth. So let's actually take a look at our vocal cords and see what they look like. So this is a video of the vocal cords. It's actually called a laryngoscope. What they did is they took a mini camera and they went up the nose all the way to the back of the throat and rested the camera just above the vocal cords so we can see them in action. The vocal cords are the two white strips right there vibrating together and they're kind of like a skin type of material. They're really flexible and they are kind of like two rubber bands in a way. Um, the scoopy material here is actually the front of the throat, so kind of the hard part of your throat. And it's made out of cartilage, so you can move it around if you touch it. And when she inhales, the cords separate, and we can actually see a little bit of the trachea down there. And we can see the air is coming up through and causing them to, to vibrate. So when she stretches the cords vertically so they're taut, they get a higher pitch. And when she when they're kind of shorter, they have a lower pitch. Let's take a listen. At a low pitch and then sing up. Okay. So as you can see in the video, the vocal cords are causing the vibration of our sound wave. Now, these vocal cords are very, very small. They're actually about the size of a dime in an adult. So they're really, really fragile. And their only job is to just generate the sound and define the pitch. So, like we saw earlier, the kind of more vertically they're stretched, the higher the pitch, and then kind of the shorter they are, the lower the pitch is. So these chords have nothing to do with volume, right? Because force is what's going to cause volume, or amplitude in this case. And that's where something called breath support comes into play. I'm sure you guys have all heard of breath support, and maybe some of you guys understand what it is, but for those of you who don't, hopefully this will help. Breath support is filling the air with lungs, so the air flow is nice and steady to keep those cords going. It also creates an air pressure system to help kind of lift all that pressure and strain off of the cords, so the cords can just do their job and vibrate and not have to worry about anything else. If you ever if you've ever noticed you're trying to sing loudly and you're kind of clenching your throat and you're trying to get it from the throat, not only does it not sound very good, but it's really bad for you. Um, you're putting a lot more stress on the cords than you need to, and over time that causes permanent damage, unfortunately. So, let's talk about some breathing techniques that help prevent all of this and help make you sound great. This is a technique called diaphragm breathing breathing from the diaphragm muscle. So we have a muscle that's located just underneath the rib cage, and it separates the lungs from the stomach and the liver and your digestive or organs. And what we're going to do is we contract the muscle, it's in a dome shape, down and out. And then when it relaxes, it comes up and in, back against the lungs. So that does two things. It, the muscle physically gets out of the way so that the lungs can completely inflate with air. And it, it creates an air pressure system. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So let's take a balloon and say this balloon is your lungs. What do you, what's going to happen if I fill it up halfway? Not really that much support, right? And if I squeeze it together, it's not giving me a lot of pressure to help propel the sound out. So what if I fill, really filled up this balloon all the way? It 
It's nice and taut. Let me give it a little bit more air. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for a really firm, tight balloon or lungs to help propel the sound out. So here's an animation of the diaphragm when we're actually using it. It contracts down and out and relaxes back up and in against the lungs. You can actually see the rib cage is moving down and out and relaxing back in. Out and in. So right now we're inhaling, this would be the lungs inflating, and exhaling when the muscle comes back up and relaxes. So that's what we mean when we talk about breathing from the diaphragm. Pushing that diaphragm muscle down and out so that the lungs can completely inflate with air, creating an air pressure system that's going to propel the sound wave from the vocal cords out the mouth. Now, that's strictly responsible for volume. How loud is our sound going to be is completely dependent on how much force we're applying, how much air and air support do we have. So now let's talk about tone and coloring the sound. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of head voice versus kind of a more contemporary chest voice. So that comes from something called resonance cavities in the skulls. You have sinuses in your forehead and your nose and just underneath your eye sockets. And we're going to use those to help the sound resonate or color the sound. When sound enters a new environment, it changes. For example, singing in the bathroom sounds way different from singing outside, right? In the bathroom, you're in a kind of a smaller area and you have lots of reflective surfaces so the sound's going to bounce around and bounce around and you get lots of kind of a reverb sound or an echo sound. Whereas if we're singing outside, it's a completely different environment. It's bigger, it's more out widespread, and the sound kind of just travels out but it doesn't really bounce back. The energy just kind of, kind of dies off. So we're going to basically use acoustics to our advantage to help our sound sound different and be louder and more resonant. So here's a view of the inside of our skull and what our sinuses actually look like and how we use them for resonance. So if you can see up here we have the frontal sinuses and sending the sound in that direction creates that head voice or a very classical tone. And it pretty much the sound is entering a new environment and that's why it gets colored that way. And specifically it's entering the, the, those areas up in the forehead. And then we also have the nasal cavity here which is very large and it extends all the way back to just underneath your eye sockets and those different compartments. You can see you can place the sound really far forward in the nose or kind of midway through the nose or back right between the eyes. So this plays a huge role in what the sound color is going to be. What's the tone? So the way that we access these resonance cavities or send the sound in their direction is dependent on the placement of the jaw, lips, cheeks, tongue, and soft palate. The soft palate is that little gargly thing in the back of your throat that seals off when you sneeze. It comes up so it seals off um, the nasal cavity so that all that junk doesn't come back. <laughs> it only goes out. So when we place the jaw down and the lips are down and my tongue's down inside of my mouth, almost as if I had an egg inside of my mouth, I get a more classical darker tone. That sends the sound to the forehead. It's called your head voice. <laughs> kind of a dark but still resonant and loud sound. Now the opposite tone is sending the sound to the nose. Nee! And if you notice for that, my jaw came up and my cheeks are lifted. And what that does is it lifts the soft pellet in the back of my throat so the sound can go forward. So it's this shape versus this shape. Now it completely depends on what style you're singing in and what tone you want. So if I were to sing a classical piece, oh, 
Ave Maria. I would kind of keep this formation of my mouth. Whereas if I were to sing a jazz piece, I would have more of the inner smile technique. Oh, the shark bites with his teeth, dear, and he shows them pearly white. So those are kind of the two extremes of whether you want a dark sound, sending the sound to your forehead, or a more contemporary sound, sending the sound to either the sinus underneath your eye sockets or the nose. So let's review what we talked about today. Our voice is a sound wave that starts with the vocal cords and is, starts with a vibration caused by the vocal cords. The vocal cords define the pitch or the note we're going to sing based on how far they're stretched. And that sound wave is supported and sustained by airflow or breath support. And the breath or the air that we provide for the sound waves is going to act as the force that's causing that vibration. So more air equals more force or more volume. And tone or coloring the sound is dependent on where are we sending the sound. Are we sending it to the forehead? Are we sending it to the nose? Are we sending it to right underneath the eyes? And that tone placement or how we send the sound is based on the position of our jaw, cheeks, tongue, and soft palate. So one thing that I really want you guys to understand is that volume never ever comes from the throat. It's strictly from breath support. How much air are we providing to the vocal cords? A lot of people get confused and think the opposite. They think that their vocal cords are responsible for everything and they're not. It's really kind of a three-part system. The lungs, the cords, and then your resonance cavities. So try to think about those things when you're singing. How much air support do you have? And where are you sending the sound? Sending the sound to different places makes it, colors it, and gives it a different tone. So thanks so much for tuning in and watching this, and just keep singing, guys. <laughs>